Welcome back. This is part two of the consumer credit lecture. Let's talk about credit rating. You hear about credit scores all the time, your credit report, and this is what we're talking about here, ability to maintain your credit rating. A good credit rating is a valuable asset that should be nurtured and protected. And it's because that way you have access to loans with lower interest rate, larger, larger amounts that you can borrow. And all the good stuff comes with it. Uh, limit your borrowing to your capacity to repay. Live up to the terms of contracts. These are the ways how you build and maintain your credit rating. And check to see what's your credit report. As most creditors rely on credit reports and considering loan applications. The two most important reasons to review your credit report from time to time is sometimes mistakes are made and uh, something is not being reported accurately and it's affecting you negatively and you wouldn't know until you see it. Or if, if you've been a victim of identity theft, uh, it will it'll probably show there uh, some loan or something that you didn't do and it's in your credit report. And then you'll have to uh, take the proper steps. Credit bureaus. These are the ones that you probably heard like TransUnion Experian is etc. The, there's a few out there. Uh, and what they do is they collect information about consumers. Uh, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax are the three big ones, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. However, let me say this. The Experian, TransUnion, Equifax are not perfect, and the people that report to them are not perfect either. And that's why I, it was just mentioned that you want to look at your credit report. And what happens a lot is that you may try to fix something in your credit report that is not your fault, and it could be either they did something wrong or somebody reported something to them that is wrong. Bottom line is that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, Protection Bureau, CFPB, they get about 36,000 complaints about the, uh, what's in here about a year. So it's very common. Mistakes happen all the time. Uh, who provides data to credit bureaus? Everybody that uh, you made a loan with or applied for credit. Uh, bureaus get information from banks, court records, finance companies, merchants, credit card companies, and other creditors. Uh, just about everybody you interacted with that would have some kind of credit worthy information. So, what's in your credit files? There's a lot of stuff. Here's just a few examples of the most common ones. The credit bureau file contains your name, address, social security number, birth date, and may also include the following information, employer, position, and income, your former address, your former employer, your spouse's name, social security number, employer, and income. Whether you own your home, rent, or board, checks return for sufficient funds, and that list is... is way longer than that but it, it would have to do with your open accounts your payment your repayment habits etc fair credit reporting act uh this is uh the act that regulates in other words legal stuff the use of credit reports requires the deletion of obsolete information so you do have somebody uh, an entity and some laws that protect you in case there's obsolete information or wrong information. It gives consumers a right to have erroneous data corrected. Only authorized persons have access to your report. And adverse data can be reported for seven years, personal bankruptcy for 10 years. Uh, this is your typical average. Now, this is not set on stone. It says it can be reported for seven years. So if you missed a few payments, if you had a bad credit history and it's over seven years old, you can ask them to remove it if it's still showing or something gets removed before seven years, but expect and plan for it to show at least for seven years. Now, but if you did personal bankruptcy, that will hold there for 10 years. Sometimes incorrect information in your credit file, mistakes may occur. 
even though they try to avoid them and prevent them, they just happen. It is up to you then to keep an eye on your report and submit notification to the appropriate people to try to get it corrected. If you have problems getting it corrected and you are in the right and it doesn't want to get, they don't want to correct it, then there's other uh, things you can do through other uh, the regulatory, like the regulatory agencies that we spoke about. Now, when you apply for credit, we do have the Equal Credit Opportunity Act where they cannot discriminate against race, color, age, sex, marital status, and certain other factors may not be used to discriminate also. Um, we can talk about the age one for a moment after we go through these. What creditors look for? There's this concept that we call the five C's. Character, do you pay your bills on time? They're gonna look at your credit report and see your history. If you have a bad habit of not paying on time, they are going to penalize you through interest, a higher interest rate, or they may not give you the loan, or if they lend you, it's going to be at a much lower amount. Capacity, can you repay the loan? Do you have enough cash on your monthly uh, expenses? And I say monthly because most things are paid on a monthly basis, but can, do you have cash to pay? Uh, excess cash after you cover all your other expenses and other debts. What are your assets and net worth? The lower your net worth, the less you can borrow amount-wise. That's one general rule. It affects other things, but that's one way to look at it. Collateral, okay? So they go back to the assets to see what you have, and can you go ahead and use some of those as collateral? When you do a mortgage, the house is automatically become collateral on the loan. A car loan, the car is collateral on the loan. However, also, once you already have those assets, you may still, let's say you have jewelry or expensive diamonds, you can use those as collateral to borrow money. Conditions, what economic conditions could affect your ability to repay the loan? Um, a simple one would be if you're in an industry and in a job that is a high risk that you may lose your job versus other jobs that are very, very stable, that could be an example. But there are a lot, a lot of other examples. If you're in a, in a job that have a high risk of, of injury, that could also affect it. Now, age, let's go back to age. Additionally, age, public assistance, housing loans, and FICO and venture score may be assessed. Now, it's that's what I wanted to say that while you cannot be discriminated about age, age can be considered, but not as a discriminating factor. An example of what I'm saying is, and this is an extreme example, but this is how it works. If you are, let's say, 85 years old, they are less likely to give you a 30-year mortgage loan. You may not live for 30 years. So the length of the amount, the length of the loan can be impacted by your age. Uh, and also the older you are, there is this concept that your capacity, it's very fixed and limited, your capacity to repay the loan. Uh, if something happens to your source of income, you may not be able to go back in the workforce. So that is not age discrimination, but that are those, those are things that are impacted by age. So it's important to make that distinction. So how the FICA score is calculated, uh, they have a formula and all that, but uh, generally speaking, just so you know, the two big items that affect your score, your credit score the most is your payment history and how much money you have in debt. The other ones have smaller uh, weights on it. So the big two items is Make sure you pay on time and keep your borrowing under control. Don't have a bunch of credit cards because it just keeps your capacity down of how much you can borrow. Things you can do to improve your credit score. Well, first of all, get copies of your credit report and review it. 
pay your bills on time. Understand how your credit score is determined, kind of like what we saw here. Learn the legal steps to take to improve your credit report. Uh, by legal steps means that uh, if something's inaccurate or something should be removed or any other reasons, just understand how you should go about to clear that up. Don't let it sit there. Beware of credit repair scams. Um, you hear it all the time. People talk about how they're going to repair your credit. Uh, uh, be careful with those. The best way to repair your credit is by taking these steps above here. These services, they typically are not really repairing your credit. They're putting, uh, they're masking your credit or putting a, a facade. Uh, and we're not going to get into the details how they do it, but it's not really repairing your credit. Defective goods or services. You may withhold payment on any damage or shoddy goods or poor services if you have paid for them with a credit card, as long as you have made a sincere attempt to resolve the problem with the merchant. Uh, it was mentioned in a previous slide that credit cards don't actually hand over the cash right away to the seller. Sometimes it may take up to 30 days. If you receive a product that is defective within those 30 days, you can still do it after. It's just a little more difficult when the cash already changed hands. Uh, this is a, you can try first to deal with the seller saying, look, uh, I didn't get what I ordered or is defective, whatever reason. And if they refuse to work with you, you can always then talk to the credit card and say like, do not pay them because we have this problem. And the credit card will get involved. Now, whether you're right or wrong, that comes out later, but it's a step you can take and it helps you uh, paying with a credit card protection that way or helps you in case of those situations. Now, identity crisis, what to do if your identity is stolen? This is a very bad thing to happen. Uh, you immediately want to put a freeze on all your, all your credit cards, bank accounts, everything. You also want to contact the three major credit bureaus, Experian, uh, TransUnion, and uh, uh, Experian, TransUnion. Ah, I forgot, though. No. Let's go back to them. Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So you want to let them know to put a freeze on your reports, on your credit reports. And the reason is, if somebody tries to get more credit while they stole your identity, since the creditor is going to check with one of those three, then the media is going to put the red flag saying, this account is frozen, uh, there is uh, identity has been stolen. And that way, you put a stop of people opening more accounts on your name. So that's the first thing I do. Put a freeze on everything. And that one with the credit bureaus is a major one. So they don't uh, uh, open new accounts. And then your bank account and everything else and credit card and credit cards to put a stop on all that. Now contact the creditors for any accounts that have been tampered with or open fraudulently. You got to start communicating with everybody. And then they'll help you go through the steps on how to do it. You definitely need to file a police report uh, and keep a copy in case your creditors need proof of the crime. Your rights under consumer credit laws. If you believe you have been refused credit due to discrimination, you can complain to the creditor and let the creditor know you're aware of the law. Sometimes something as simple as that may, may help the situation. Uh, if they continue to refuse and you still believe that it's based on discrimination, file a complaint with the government, uh, the different agencies of the FAIR Acts that we spoke about. If all else fails, sue the creditor in a federal district court. If you tried with a creditor, you tried through the agency, the government agency that should be able to help out uh, uh, by submitting a complaint and see if that moves the creditor. At that point, if you still want to pursue, contact the lawyer, review the case, and they'll let you know what your chances are. And uh, if it, you have a, a legitimate complaint, you end up in court. You have to sue them. If not, just drop it, move on to the next. 
And we will conclude our lecture here. See you on the next one.